tuned in to the arts reporter miss mimi johnson i miss y'all you know i love you so much look i have got to tell you that on saturday i want to see all of my folks at the 14th street playhouse where i am the legendary miss billy holiday at the 14th street playhouse it is atlanta georgia when i tell you atlanta georgia will never be the same Log on to AngieTheMusical.com. What an awesome, awesome show. When I tell you um, my castmates are from five years old on up. Y'all know how old I am on up more. Awesome cast. So make sure you put in promo code 5744 Angie because partial proceeds of my ticket sales are going to go to Susan Coleman, Susan G. Coleman, and Nichelle Fox, Breast Cancer Awareness. So I need for people to buy tickets so that I can go ahead and I can write them a check. Because y'all know I'm number one activist. <laughs> hey, Neil. Uh, hey, baby, doll. how are you? Today? I'm good. This is our ah, visual <laughs> artist. What you see in back of me, neilhamilton.com. N E A L. N E A L Hamilton.com. I got to give a shout out to some of my Facebook uh, messages that I have gotten. My goodness, Sarah O'Reilly. Wow, Mimi. I watch your posts daily and I watch your shows and your performance, and you are an awesome talent. Thank you, Sarah. I'll be sending you some hearts on Facebook. Um, Ingrid Simon, I heard of you through a friend of mine and I just want to say that I'm very impressed keep up the good work thank you Ingrid Sam Jefferson I love R&B music and uh, I have a passion for being a musician and I hope one day we can work together soon well okay Sam you know how to look me up MimiJohnson.net and Amanda Peterson short and sweet okay keep up the great work Mimi I love you <laughs> Those are the biggest words that you can tell me, that you love me. Thank you so much, Amanda, Sam, Ingrid, and Sarah. Look, this gentleman right here, I, I just have to take a breath. <laughs> he is a breath of fresh air. When I went to his website and I saw his magnificent drawings, and then the fact that he even honored me, to say that he is going to do a portrait of me and my mother, Joan Cartwright. Ma, hey, ma. <laughs> I was like, wow, because that is such an honor. Neil Hamilton, ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Hey, I'm pretty good, Mimi. How you doing today, big doll? Hmm? Fabulous, wonderful, great. You already know. As always. As always, God has got me in a really great place. And I see he's got you in a great place as well. Yes, yeah. I've been blessed and I, you know, I got to spread those blessings. Neil, when you first picked up a paintbrush, how old were you? Uh, I actually, uh, my, my parents and grandparents noticed I was um, doing something above average when I was three. I, I was yeah. going to say one. No, about three. Two, I, had, I had a couple of years of clowning around on, you know, but three. Okay. Got serious about some things. Okay. Yeah. And then, first of all, where are you from? I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, actually. Okay. And I've relocated here. I've been here about almost two years now. In Atlanta. Yes. ATL. ATL. I'm here and I'm loving it. Yeah, yes. I like I like Atlanta. 
So your parents, they saw you at three years old with this magnificent talent. Yeah, they saw something. Yeah, yeah. My grandma, what happened, what really happened was, you know, when you're three, I was into dinosaurs and things like that. And, mm -hmm. I, and I came up to my grandmother one day and I said, Grandma, can you draw me a dinosaur? And she she, she did her best and drew one. I said, no, Grandma, not good. Let me, let me show you how to draw a dinosaur. And then that's when they saw something going on. So but, by, so, but I was still too young to go to school. So by the time I got about eight or nine years old, they enrolled me in the Cleveland Museum of Art. There you go. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And from there, I mean, things just took off, you know. So, you know, I mean, I was always in the street having fun with, you know, everybody else too. But, uh, but. Other times I was home practicing mm -hmm. all of my skills. Mm -hmm. When you got into high school, I want you to speak up a little bit more. When you got right. into high school, what was your feeling about being this wonderful? Because I know by the time you was in high school, you was just the bomb. So what was your feeling about, wow, I think that this one's, I want this to be my career? Because I know you had some kind of feeling about our future. Well, yeah, yeah, I was there, and I had commercial art classes in high school, and I was definitely, you know, one of the top students in the class. You know, I was kind of clowning around. I wouldn't show up for half the class. Okay. <laughs> doing something else, and and then at the last minute, I would get, I would finally get serious about the assignment and actually ace it every time. You know, okay. Like, pissed a lot of people off, but it was natural for me. Because you didn't even have to study. Yeah, not really. I hate to say it, but no, everybody has to study to, you know, to get good at your craft. You know, that was just that young, immature stuff at the time. You know, but then after that, I saw that, okay, when we get out of high school, it's time to get serious about a career. Yes, so, indeed. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Bette Midler over here on my side, which I already told him I'm going to buy this painting right here and put it in my studio. Awesome. And then we have the Dark Knight on the other side. And I believe that Al Burroughs, hey Al, I believe Al Burroughs is putting up some other images. So we have Miles Davis. Yeah, that one actually just appeared in um this last month some um, Ebony magazine. Uh, the, the cover was um, um had um Steve Harvey on the cover, and somebody called me because um there's a reproduction of this down in this restaurant in New Orleans it's called Lil Dizzy's, and okay. somebody said you're on page sixty on Ebony. I'm like, yeah, that's my Miles Davis. Wow. So, yeah, so my stuff is like all over the world. That has got to be yeah. feel so good. At the time, I don't know what happens. You know, I always get a call from somebody else. Me and say, that's your work somewhere over here, and this is your work over there because I don't pay attention to it much. I'm just busy painting the next thing. But, Okay, and getting them paychecks. Yes, yes. Okay, that this kind of work right here costs. I told him I'm gonna have to put a payment plan together. He gonna be like my mortgage note. Okay. <laughs> no, we gonna hook you up. You family, Mimi. We gonna hook you up. We got Ray Charles right there. So awesome. What inspired you to draw Mr. Ray Charles? Well, so what happens? Let me give a little background. Really, I'm, I used to be the chief photographer for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio, for ten years. So I used to tour with all these musicians in real life. I was, yes. I was their cameraman. So I spent a lot of up close time with a lot of these people. So wow. after I retired from 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 the rock hall, I moved down here, and then you know I, I created this line of work to to be, you know further celebrate you know my love for music. You know, so I know that I can put together what I did is I put together a new style and technique. This was you know uh, on purpose to do this style like this, and I call my company Paint Out Loud, as you see, because it does yeah. grab you when you see it. So and I get a lot of musicians behind me now. A lot of people line up to to buy my work from me. Yes, mm -hmm. and you're also affiliated with my auntie Rita Graham. Oh, absolutely! Mm -hmm. what yes, a doll. What a doll. hey, she, Miss Auntie. And, and she used to perform with Ray Charles. Charles. Yes. She used to sing with Ray Charles and tour the world. Yes, yes. let's so, just plug her book real quick. Oh God, Karma Rising, people, you got to read this book. It's a fantastic read. You know, I don't have a lot of time to read books, but she convinced me to read it. And I yeah. Did. And it's a wonderful book, and I can see it turn into a movie one day. So you all heard it here first. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we have Tina Turner, who I'm already, you know, Diva Joan Cartwright. <laughs> so I, I'm almost have mastered the Diva Joan Cartwright. But I really, I want to be like Tina Turner when I grow up, grow up. Yeah, right. You're already there, baby doll. Oh so my we, God. So we're gonna hook you up though. You're gonna be in the same company, okay? This mm -hmm. this portrait of her is amazing. It's so beautiful. What I, is the white? What 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 is that representing? Well, that's actually like one of my hidden signatures. I kind of put that in all my paintings just as a trademark type of thing. Mm, a yes. Yeah. So all my paintings have that in there. Okay. I noticed that. Yeah. Okay. So it's an authenticator, actually. Yes, yeah, that's mm -hmm. your watermark, honey. Yeah, so everybody that's know. It. Built in. That's yes. Neil. <laughs> NeilHamilton.com. Uh, N E A L Hamilton.com. Where do you see your life, your existence with your career? Um, where do you see yourself saying, let's go long term for 10 years? Wow. 
That's a long, that's a long Yeah, well, I mean, but 10 years, but, look at the last 10 years, how fast that yeah, went by, okay. By fast. Hopefully, I mean, I, hopefully, and you know, I'm getting better like anybody at their, 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 their craft, you know, I'm going to constantly get better and, and take it to new, to new levels. Yes. And um, right now, I think um, beautiful things are happening this year alone. Since I moved to Atlanta, things have really kind of, really jump-started here. You know, when I first got here, um, Carlos Santana, you know, um, uh, hired me to paint his custom guitars, and then Paul McCartney, and wow. Dave Navarro, and uh, Vince Gill, um, Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin. So we have, you know, there's another website. It's called mnnguitarproject.com. Okay. And what happens on this, that we raise a lot of charitable money for St. Jude's Children's Hospitals, American Cancer Society, Music Cares, and a lot of uh, charities. So what happens is the, the, the guitar companies send custom guitars th through my agent to me. I paint images of, of celebrities on them, and then they go to auctions to raise money for all the, you know, needy people out here. And it's a, one, it's a wonderful trade-off, actually. That is fabulous. Mm -hmm. That is fabulous. And giving back to the community as yes. well. That's what it is, right? Yes, indeed. That's so important that we, uh, as entertainers, artists, entrepreneurs, give back to the community as much as we possibly can. Yes. And we have our own causes, you know. Um, and that's the one thing that I love about Lil Jimmy, who will be coming up uh, later on in this sec in this uh, t on this show. Is that he really increases the profile of uh, child abuse yes. and bullying and things like that to me is so important. Yes, it is. So, um, you know, and I love people like that. Michelle Fox, Bre Breast Cancer Awareness, Vita Brown, uh, um, Domestic Violence. Um, There's a long list of Kendall, things. Well, these are the people I work with. Good. Kendall Richardson, uh, HIV and AIDS. No, mm -hmm. these are people I work directly with okay, to good. help raise money. So, let's get back to you. So, seeing myself, you know, like I said, in 10 years, you know, I, there's so many things to do. And I'm meeting so many beautiful people these days with lots of great ideas. And, you know, we sift through them and then we find something, and, you know, when it hits you in the heart, you know, you got you to gotta, you gotta go with it. Yes. So, I said, I'm always there. If I can visually give something that's going to change something, I'm going to do it. Because one thing I notice my work does make a difference. People walk in a room, they see it, they, they like they get excited about it. And that excites me, you know. Yes. And, you know, we got to keep our, our, our blood pumping too sometimes. You know, we get so emotional sometimes, us artist types. You know? Yes, we are very emotional oh, about our talent and craft. But I was teary-eyed uh, the other night. I yeah, posted man. I had like 10 different countries that watch my show. Mm -hmm. All right, let's make it eleven. 12. And it just, it just really yeah. amazed me when I looked at the analytics, mm -hmm. and I posted that I'm teary eyed. So. But that keeps me going, keeps my blood pumping, keeps you just going. like you said. That's right, it keeps you going. Sometimes, you know, when you're down, like I said, I'll get calls or Facebook or all the, you know, social media that, that people are seeing my work all around the world. Sometimes, I mean, some people, you know, get mad and say, "Well, they, they didn't, you didn't, they didn't have uh, the authority to take a picture." I'm like, "That's good. That's free advertising for me." So if there's somebody putting a picture of mine up on a wall in Germany or something, let them do it. That's you know, right. it's just it just helps my brand. That's right. You know, so I don't get upset about it. That's you know? right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then they'll see the white. Yeah, they know. It's and fine. they know that is Neil Hamilton. That's right. Dot com. You know, the AJC did a story on me back in um, April 29th, did a two page spread in the art section. Did a very good article. And it starts off the first line kind of scared me. It says there is no mistaking a Neil Hamilton painting. And then they compared me to some serious people, you know, in the art world. I'm like, oh, geez, okay. <laughs> well, when mm. people start comparing you or saying you are like, I have people do that to me all the time. Oh, you're yeah. like this person right. or you're like that person or right. you sing like this, but they're excellent performers. That's and, right. So I'm like, okay. I'll take it. That's right. What? That's right. Yes, yes. What are some, what's some advice, some last words? to kind of just tell people, you know, about the industry and how they should go about being an artist, visual artist, all kinds of artists, and also dealing with business. You sure you want me to tell the truth here? Tell the truth. Shame the devil. I mean, because sometimes, you know, school is one thing and school is in place to do a certain thing. But, go ahead. But in this business, for real, no matter what you are in the arts, you have to be really, really, really dedicated to wanting to go all the way, not halfway, not three quarters way. I mean, all the way. And there's a lot of pain and suffering that might come with that, and a lot of down days and a lot yes. of hard work and blood, sweat, and tears, as you heard before. Oh yeah, yeah. But you, but but it's like anything else. You you have to believe. You can't give up, and you got to go all the way. That's right. I mean, no matter how, how painful it might get, you might have your friends, your mates, or your family against you, talking about you, dogging you, you know, all that stuff. 
but you have to believe enough in yourself to say, I'm going to go and take this all the way because this comes from somewhere else. So all the people who are doing all the talking don't matter. That's right. Right? That's right. Yeah. This is a gift that was given to me by something special somewhere else. Yeah. So I got, I, I got to do what the man wants me to do. You better go with that spirit. That's you better it. go. That's it. So all the haters, see y'all. <laughs> Holla. That's right, baby doll. Holla to the haters. <laughs> And embrace the lovers. But you know what? The proof is in the pudding always, though. You know, if you got something down that's good, they can't take that away from you. And that's one thing I know. You're not going to take what I have, you know, because I know what I can do. No okay? way. No and then way. When, if, if you catch up to that, then I got something else for you. Okay? Yes. I can take it to another level all the time. And also, like, even right now, a new club, we had to snatch a couple of pieces off the wall. There's a place on Howl Mill called Charisma, like a new lounge that just opened up. Yeah. So they got the whole place is lying on my work. I put a couple of pieces up there, and all of a sudden, the, the owner says, Neil, you got to bring more stuff up here. Take all this other stuff down, put your stuff up now. Hey. <laughs> yeah, so they got mad when I went here and borrowed Batman. Oh, they, yeah, they was gonna have they was gonna have to give up something. Yeah, they they were like about to check me at the door. Like, uh -huh. wait a minute, we, whoa, whoa. You I, said, I said we gotta go to Mimi's show. This, we'll be back. <laughs> See, and if it was me, I would have had it like drilled, and you wouldn't have been able to take it off my wall. <laughs> Neil Hamilton, ladies and gentlemen, please make sure you go and check him out. A, he's and his pieces are affordable as well. Wonderful pieces. Look. We're going to be right back after these messages. This is the Arts Reporter, your Arts Reporter, Miss Mimi Johnson. Every Wednesday where it goes down right here at 7 p.m. on MimiJohnson.net. Love you so much, and I will be right back. Thank you. 